Chapter 3. Animal Husbandry and Dairying. Learning Objectives. After studying this chapter, students will be able to understand the nutritional requirements of livestock. Know breeding methods of farm animals. Tell the major diseases of livestock and poultry and their management. Know the importance and use vaccination of animals. Introduction. Whensoever, we go to a dairy or village, we find that few animals are quite healthy and few are very weak. Similarly, few dairies are neat and clean and producers give utmost care for rearing of animals, yet others are careless. This all depends on the management of nutrition and diseases. Livestock needs to be fed with balanced diet like human being. Farm animals also suffer from several diseases like us, and hence, management of their diseases is most important aspect of their rearing. For the management of several fatal diseases, GOFT of India has initiated several vaccination programs. Similarly, breeding of animals is most important aspect for producing new individuals and increasing the population of wanted breeds. Furthermore, several products and byproducts are produced from the farm animals, and their disposal and or utilization is a major issue in our country. In this chapter, you will come to know about all these aspects in brief. Nutritional requirements of livestock. For proper growth, health and reproduction, animals also require several nutrients. The essential nutrients required by animals are water, energy, protein, minerals, and vitamins. These nutrients are needed to maintain body weight, growth, reproduction, lactation, and health. Water. Water is the most abundant, cheapest, and least understood of all nutrients required for livestock production. However, it is the most essential for all livestock. The producers should plan for an adequate supply of clean water when designing any type of livestock enterprise. 30. Stagnant water can lead to inadequate water consumption, which will affect performance of livestock. The amount of water required depends on the age animal, health and the surrounding environment. However, in general, lactating animals require more water, and the amount of water required increases as atmospheric. 121. Basic agriculture temperature increases. For example, at temperatures above 35 degrees Celsius, cattle require about 8 to 15 liters of water per kilogram of dry matter intake. In general, cattle require approximately 2.6% of their body weight in dry matter, DM, intake per day. When the weather is hot in the summer, the requirement of the animal for water also increases. A lactating dairy cow requires on average between 15 and 35 gallons of water per day. Non-lactating dairy and beef cows require about 15 gallons per day. An adult horse will consume up to 15 gallons per day, which will increase 2 to 3 times when exercising. Adult sheep between 1 and a half and 3 gallons a day. Adult swine from 3 to 5 gallons per day. And adult hens about a pint. A quick rule of thumb is that for every 2 pounds of dry feed intake, an animal should receive 1 gallon of water. This will vary with stress, weather conditions, heat, cold, disease, productive state, work, exercise, etc., as well as the water and salt content of the feed. Often the first sign that water consumption is inadequate is when animals stop eating. Water is essential to maintain adequate feed consumption. Protein. In general, the amount of protein supplied in the diet of the animal is more critical than the quality of the protein. Ruminants have the ability to convert low-quality protein sources to high-quality proteins through bacterial action. Protein is required by all grazing animals for growth. Protein required for a 1,000 pounds non-lactating cow is around 1.6 LB per day. When the cow is lactating, 2.0 LB or 9.6% dietary crude protein is required. If protein is deficient in the diet, animals must break down body tissue to obtain sufficient protein. A protein deficient animal must break down 6.7 LB of lean body tissue to supply 1 pound of protein, resulting in severe weight loss. Energy. Sufficient energy is required for better performance of livestock, which varies greatly with age and type of animal. It is especially important during late gestation and early lactation periods. Energy deficiencies can cause reduced growth rate, loss of weight, reduced fertility, lowered milk production, and reduced wool quantity and quality. Energy is primarily obtained from carbohydrates present in the plant material or feed supplied to animal. Vitamins and minerals. Like human beings, animals also require vitamins and minerals for growth and development. Ruminants require all the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, A, and K, but they can synthesize the B vitamins in their rumen. Normally, the forage and feed supply contain all essential vitamins in adequate amounts, except vitamin A which is obtained as carotene from green plants. Salt is essential for many body functions and important to maintain intake of feeds and water. Calcium and phosphorus are needed to maintain growth, feed consumption, normal bone development, and reproductive efficiency. 1 2 2. Other nutrients and minerals such as vitamin E and selenium are important for maintenance of healthy bodies and reproduction. Factors affecting nutritional requirements of animals. The nutrient requirements of animals tend to vary only slightly within a given weight, sex, age, and physiological state. Physiological stage, the nutritional requirements of livestock are greatly influenced by the growth stage. The key physiological stages in the life of animals are growth, i.e., young animals, late pregnancy, lactation, and maintenance, and non-lactating periods. In general, the highest nutritional requirements are during lactation period, followed by late gestation, growth, and finally maintenance. Topography and climatic conditions, the nutrient requirements of the animals are also dependent on environmental and climatic conditions. Grazing and voluntary animals also require substantial increases in energy expenditure. Some animals walk long distances, climb gradients, and ingest herbage often of low dry matter content, thus spending more time eating and foraging for food. It has been estimated that cows grazing use 30% more energy than confined cows because of longer grazing time and longer travel distance. The climatic factors, particularly temperature, also affect the amount of feed an animal needs to maintain its body functions. As ambient temperature drops, an animal's metabolic rate increases, and more energy is needed to maintain internal heat. This effect can be exacerbated by wind or wet hide, hair on the animals. Breeding of farm animals. Breeding means, the manner in which selected males and females are mated. Breeding makes new combination or sequencing of genes in the individual. The breeders identify and select desirable qualities in animals for future mating and discard less desirable qualities. For the improvement of livestock selection and breeding must be practiced simultaneously. Continuous selective breeding leads to homozygosity in a population resulting in a loss of variability. If all the individuals are alike, the breeder cannot make progress in future. Hence, there is a need to create a variability in population. This can be achieved by breeding. Therefore, selection and breeding should go hand in hand for the improvement of livestock. Classification of breeding systems. Under the selected breeding system, selected males and females are mated. The breeding system can be classified into five different ways depending on their phenotypic and genotypic relations. 1. Random mating. 2. Phenotypic assortive mating. 1. 2. 3. Basic agriculture. 3. Phenotypic desortive mating. 4. Genetic assortive mating. And 5. Genetic desortive mating. 1. Random mating or panmixia. It is a system of mating in which each male individual has an equal opportunity to mate with the female individual and vice versa. This mating system generally takes place in nature where the number of males and females are assumed to be equal. 2. Phenotypic assortive mating. In this type of mating, animals which are phenotypically alike are allowed to mate among themselves. This is also called, like-to-like, -like mating. 3. Phenotypic disassortive mating. In this method, individuals which are phenotypically unlike are allowed to mate. It is also called, unlike-to-unlike, -unlike, mating. 
For example, mating of tall with short individuals. 4. Genetic assortive mating. In the system, individuals, which are genetically closely related are allowed to mate. This is also known as inbreeding. 5. Genetic disassortive mating. In the system, mating takes place between less closely related individuals. This is also called as outbreeding. Breeding methods There are two major breeding methods, inbreeding and outbreeding. Inbreeding. It is defined as, breeding of more closely related individuals, males and females, than the average relationship of the population. Depending upon the closeness among mated individuals, inbreeding is of the following three types. At close inbreeding, mating individuals have relationship about 0.25 e, mild inbreeding, mating of relatives beyond second generation and up to sixth generation e, line breeding, mating of relatives between fourth sixth generations. Advantages of inbreeding 1. Due to increase in homozygosity, the stamping ability or prepotency of inbred line increases. 2. It helps to eliminate lethals and semi lethals due to homozygosity. 1, 2, 4. 3. It increases genetic variance between lines and reduces genetic variance within lines. Disadvantages of inbreeding 1. Many lines are lost due to homozygous lethals or semi lethals. 2. Due to loss of heterozygosity, the hybrid vigor is lost. 3. Inbreeding leads to lower birth weight, postnatal mortality, baby death after birth, poor growth, reproductive disorder, and low resistance to diseases. Outbreeding it is opposite to inbreeding where unrelated individuals are mated. The breeding individuals have relationship less than the average relationship of the population. Outbreeding results in increase in heterozygosity and decrease in homozygosity. It is of the following two types. I. Outbreeding within a breed, and E. Outbreeding between two species, strain, line, breed. Advantages of outbreeding 1. Outbreeding increases heterozygosity, which results in hybrid vigor, increase in weight, faster growth, increased resistance to disease, low mortality. 2. It covers the defects of recessive lethals and semi lethal genes. 3. It increases genetic variance within lines, products, and byproducts of livestock and their uses. India is bestowed with vast livestock wealth and it is growing at the rate of 6% per annum. The contribution of livestock industry, including poultry and fish, is increasing substantially in GDP of country, which accounts for greater than 40% of total agricultural sector and greater than 12% of GDP. This contribution would have been much greater had the animal byproducts been also efficiently utilized. Efficient utilization of byproducts has direct impact on the economy and environmental pollution of the country. Non utilization or under utilization of byproducts not only lead to loss of potential revenues but also lead to the added and increasing cost of disposal of these products. Non utilization of animal byproducts in a proper way may create major aesthetic and catastrophic health problems. Besides pollution and hazard aspects, in many cases, meat, poultry, and fish processing wastes have a potential for recycling raw materials or for conversion into useful products of higher value. Traditions, culture, and religion are often important when a meat byproduct is being utilized for food. Regulatory requirements are also important because many countries restrict the use of meat byproducts for reasons of food safety and quality. Byproducts such as blood, liver, lung, kidney, brains, spleen, and tripe have good nutritive value. Several byproducts have medicinal and pharmaceutical uses. Waste products from the poultry processing and egg production. 125. Basic agriculture industries must be efficiently dealt with as the growth of these industries depends largely on waste management. Treated fish waste has found many applications among which the most important are animal feed, biodiesel, biogas, dietetic products, chitosan, natural pigments, after extraction, and cosmetics, collagen. Byproducts of the meat industry and their utilization. Several byproducts such as variety of meat, blood, hides and skin, bones, glands and organs and tallow and lard are produced by the meat industry. Table 1. Beside pollution and hazard aspects, in many cases, meat processing waste have a potential for recycling raw materials, or for conversion into useful products of higher value as byproduct, or even as raw material for other industries, or for use as food or feed after biological treatment. Particularly utilization of meat industry waste is receiving increased attention in view of the fact that these wastes represent a possible and utilizable resource for conversion to useful products. Fish waste stands for one of the continuously gaining ground waste management fields. Among the most prominent current uses for treated fish waste are collagen, biogas, biodiesel, dietic applications, chitosan, and food packaging. Meat producers have been using meat byproducts for a long time to process into different products, some edible and some inedible. Today, with the increased concerns over health, technology has been developed to permit more efficient utilization of these byproducts. In India, the slaughterhouse waste management system is very poor and several measures are being taken for the effective management of waste generated from slaughterhouses. Competition is also a strong incentive for meat industries to use byproducts more efficiently. This is important, because increased profits and lower costs are required in the future for the meat industry to remain viable. These innovations also increase the value of the carcass, and increase the profits of livestock raisers. Variety of meats are the wholesale edible byproducts. They are segregated, chilled and processed under sanitary conditions and inspected. In some parts of the world, blood is also utilized as an edible product for human beings. In US, meat trimmed from the head is described on edible offal or an edible byproduct. Edible fats are obtained during slaughter, such as the cowl fat surrounding the rumen or stomach, or the cutting fat which is back fat, oak leaf fat or rumen fat. In commercial slaughterhouse practice in UK, the offal is divided into red, head, liver, lungs, tongue, tail etc, and white, fat, plus the set of guts and bladder, the set of tripe, rumen, and the four feet in trimming. Some items may not be used in uncooked products. This list includes mammalian parts such as blood, blood plasma, feet, large intestines, small intestines, lungs, esophagus meat, rectum, stomach, non-ruminant, first stomach, tripe, after cooking, second stomach, tripe, after cooking, fourth stomach, testicles and udder. It also includes poultry parts such as gizzards and necks. The yield of edible meat byproducts from pigs is around 6.7% of the carcass's weight. Whether these products are widely accepted. 1 2, 6. By consumers depends on various factors. These include the nutrient content, the price and whether there are comparable competing products. Table 1. Proportion of byproducts produced by meat industry. Item. Pigs. Cattle. Sheep percent kilogram. Percent kilogram. Percent kilogram. Market live weight. Dash. 100. Dash. 600. Dash. 60. Whole carcass. 77.5. 77.5. 63.0. 378.0. 62.5, 37.5, blood, 3.0, 3.0, 18.0, 4.0, 2.4, fatty tissue, 3.0, 3.0, 24.0, 3.0, 1.8, hide or skin, 6.0, 6.0, 6.0, 36.0, 15.0, 9.0, organs, 7.0, 7.0, 16.0, 96.0, 10.0, 6.0, head, 5.9, 5.9, -9, dash, 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 chest and abdomen, 10.0, 10.0, 16.0, 96.0, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, 4.
11.0, 6.6, feet, 2.0, 2.0, 2.0, 12.0, 2.0, 1.2, a, 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0 0.1, 0.1, 6.0, brain, 0.1, 0.1, 0.1, 6.0, 2.6, 0.156, Nutritive value of meat byproducts. Edible meat byproducts contain many essential nutrients. Some are used as medicines because they contain special nutrients such as amino acids, hormones, minerals, vitamins, and fatty acids. Not only blood, but several other meat byproducts have a higher level of moisture than meat. Some examples are lung, kidney, brains, spleen, and tripe. Some organ meat, including liver and kidney, contains a higher level of carbohydrate than other meat materials. Pork tail has the highest fat content and the lowest moisture content of all meat byproducts. The liver, tail, ears, and feet of cattle have a protein level which is close to that of lean meat tissue, but a large amount of collagen is found in the ears and feet. The lowest protein level is found in the brain, chitterlings, and fatty tissue. Some byproducts such as ears, feet, lungs, stomach, and tripe contain a larger amount of proline, hydroxyproline, and glycine, and a lower level of tryptophan and tyrosine. The vitamin content of organ meats is usually higher than that of lean meat issue. Kidney and liver contain the largest amount of riboflavin, 1.697 minus 3.630 mg, 100 grams, and have 5 to 10 times more than lean meat. Liver is the best source of niacin, vitamin B. 12, B. 6, folacin, ascorbic acid, and vitamin A. Kidney is also a good source of vitamin B. 6, B. 12, and folacin. Lamb kidneys, pork, liver, lungs, and spleen are an excellent source of iron, as well as vitamins. The copper content is highest in the livers of beef, lamb, and veal. With 127. Basic agriculture, the exception of brain, kidney, lungs, spleen, and ears, most other byproducts contain sodium at or below the levels found in lean tissue. Mechanically deboned meat has the highest calcium content, 315 to 485 mg, 100 grams. Many organ meats contain more polyunsaturated fatty acids than lean tissue. Brain, chitterlings, heart, kidney, liver, and lungs have the lowest level of monounsaturated fatty acids and the highest level of polyunsaturated fatty acids. There is 3 to 5 times more cholesterol, 260 to 410 mg, 100 grams, in organ meats than in lean meat, and large quantities of phospholipids. Brain has the highest level of cholesterol, 1,352 to 1,195 mg, 100 grams, and also has the highest amount of phospholipids compared to other meat byproducts. For this reason, the United States Department of Health recommends that limited amounts of these byproducts be eaten, because of health concerns. The high cholesterol content of many other organ meats, and the possible accumulation of pesticide, drug residues and toxic heavy metals, is another reason for limited consumption. Utilization of blood. Animal blood has a high level of protein and hemine, and is an important edible byproduct. In Europe, animal blood has long been used to make blood sausages, blood pudding, biscuits and bread. In Asia, it is used in blood curd, blood cake and blood pudding. It is also used for non-food items such as fertilizer, feedstuffs and binders. Blood is usually sterile in a healthy animal. It has high protein content, 17.0, with a reasonably good balance of amino acids. Blood is a significant part of the animal's body mass, 2.4-8.0% of the animal's live weight. The average percentage of blood that can be recovered from pigs, cattle and lambs are 3.0-4.0, 3.0-4.0, and 3.5-4.0%, respectively. However, the use of blood in meat processing may mean that the final product is dark in color, and not very palatable. Plasma is the portion of blood that is of greatest interest, because of its functional properties and lack of color. Blood is used in food as an emulsifier, a stabilizer, a clarifier, a color additive, and as a nutritional component. Most blood is used in livestock feed in the form of blood meal. It is used as a protein supplement, a milk substitute, a lysine supplement, or a vitamin stabilizer, and is an excellent source of most of the trace minerals. Blood plasma has ability to form a gel, because it contains 60.0% albumin. Plasma is the best water and fat binder of the blood fraction. Blood can be separated into several fractions that have therapeutic properties. Liquid plasma is the largest fraction, 63.0%. It consists of albumin, 3.5%, globulin and fibrinogen, 4.0%. Utilization of hides and skins. Animal hides have been used for shelters, clothing and as containers by human beings since prehistoric times. The hides represent a remarkable portion of the weight of the 1 to 8. Live animal, from 4% to as much as 11%, e.g. cattle, 5.1-8.5%, average, 7.4%, sheep, 11.0-11.7%, swine, 3.0-8.0%. Hides and skins are generally one of the most valuable byproducts from animals. Examples of finished products from the hides of cattle and pigs, and from sheep pelts, are leather shoes and bags, rawhide, athletic equipment, reform sausage casing and cosmetic products, sausage skins, edible gelatin and glue. After the hide is removed from the animal, it should be cured quickly to avoid decomposition by bacteria and enzymes. Gelatin is produced by the controlled hydrolysis of a water-insoluble collagen derived from protein. It is made from fresh raw materials, hides or bone, that are in an edible condition. Both hides and bones contain large quantities of collagen. Gelatin extracted from animal skins and hides can be used for food. The raw material can also be rendered into lard. Collagen from hides and skins also has a role as an emulsifier in meat products because it combines large quantities of fat. This makes it a useful additive or filler for meat products. Collagen can also be extracted from cattle hides to make the collagen sausage used in the meat industry. Gelatin is added to a wide range of foods, as well as forming a major ingredient in jellies. Approximately 6.5% of the total production of gelatin is used in the pharmaceutical industry. Most of it is used to make the outer covering of capsules. Gelatin can also be used as a binding and compounding agent in the manufacture of medicated tablets and pastels. It is used as an important ingredient in protective ointment, such as zinc gelatin for the treatment of ulcerated varicose veins. Gelatin can be made into a sterile sponge which are used in surgery, and also to implant a drug or antibiotic directly into a specific area. A product made from extracted collagen can stimulate blood clotting during surgery. Pork skin is similar to human skin, and can be converted into a dressing for burns or skin ulcers. Pork skin used as a dressing needs to be cut into strips or into a patch, shade of hair, split to a thickness of 0.2-0.5. MM, cleansed, sanitized and packaged. It can be used for skin grafting. When used for skin grafting, it is removed from the carcass within 24 hours of the death of the pig. Utilization of bones. 11% of pork carcasses, 15% of beef carcasses and 16% of lamb carcasses are bone. These values are higher if they include the meat clinging to the bone. The marrow inside some of the bones can also be used as food. The marrow may be 4.0-6.0% of the carcass weight. For centuries, bones have been used to make soup and gelatin. Meat and bone meal, MBM, was widely recommended and used in animal nutrition as a protein source in place of proteinaceous feeds because of its content of available essential amino acids, minerals and vitamin B12. 
MBM and related rendered protein commodities have potential for use in applications other than animal feed, including use as a fuel or a phosphorus fertilizer. 129. Basic agriculture. Utilization of glands and organs. Animal organs and glands offer a wide variety of flavors and textures, and often have a high nutritional value. They are highly prized as food in many parts of the world, particularly Southeast Asia. Those used as human foods include the brain, heart, kidneys, liver, lungs and spleen. They also include the tongue, the bovine pancreas and udder, the stomach and uterus of pigs, the rumen, reticulum, omasum and absomasum of sheep and cattle, and the testes and thymus of sheep and pigs. The brain, nervous system and spinal cord are usually prepared direct for the table rather than processed for industrial use. They are blanched to firm the tissue before cooking, because of the soft texture. Heart is used as a table meat. Whole hearts can be roasted or braised. Sliced heart meat is grilled or braised. Kidneys are generally removed from the fatty capsule which holds the kidney in place. Kidneys may be cooked whole or in slices, and are generally broiled, grilled, or braised. Liver is the most widely used edible organ. It is used in many processed meats, such as liver sausage and liver paste. Livers from lambs, veal calves and young cattle are preferred for the table in the United States and Europe, because they have a lighter flavor and texture. Consumers in Southeast Asia, however, generally prefer livers from pigs. Pig, calf and lamb lungs are mainly used to make stuffing and some types of sausages and processed meats. Animal intestines are used as food after being boiled in some countries. Animal intestines are also used in pet food or for meat meal, tallow or fertilizer. Animal glands and organs are traditionally used as medicine in many countries, including China, India and Japan. The endocrine glands secrete hormones. These include the liver, lungs, pituitary, thyroid, pancreas, stomach, kidney, ovary and follicle. Brains, nervous systems and spinal cords are a source of cholesterol which is the raw material for the synthesis of vitamin D3. Cholesterol is also used as an emulsifier in cosmetics. Bile consists of acids, pigments, proteins, cholesterol ETC, and can be obtained from the gallbladder. It is used for the treatment of indigestion, constipation and bile tract disorders. It is also used to increase the secretory activity of the liver. Bile from cattle or pigs can be purchased as a dry extract or in liquid form. Gallstones are reported to have aphrodisiac properties, and can be sold at a high price. They are usually used as ornaments to make necklaces and pendants. Different products are farm animals. 130. The liver is the largest gland in animals. The liver of mature cattle usually weighs about 5 kilograms, while that of a pig weighs approximately 1.4 kilogram. Liver extract is produced by mixing raw ground liver with slightly acidified hot water. Liver extract can be obtained from pigs and cattle, and has been used for a long time as a source of vitamin B12, and as a nutritional supplement used to treat various types of anemia. Heparin can be extracted from the liver, as well as the lungs and the lining of the small intestines. It is used as an anticoagulant to prolong the clotting time of blood. It is also used to thin the blood, to prevent blood clotting during surgery and in organ transplants. Progesterone and estrogen can be extracted from pig ovaries. It may be used to treat reproductive problems in women. Relaxin is a hormone taken from the ovaries of pregnant sows, and is often used during childbirth. The pancreas provides insulin, which regulates sugar metabolism and is used in the treatment of diabetes. Glucagon extracted from the cells of the pancreas is used to increase blood sugar, and to treat insulin overdoses or low blood sugar caused by alcoholism. Utilization of edible tallow and lard. Animal fats are an important byproduct of the meatpacking industry. The major edible animal fats are lard and tallow. Lard is the fat rendered from the clean tissues of healthy pigs. Tallow is hard fat rendered from the fatty tissues of cattle or sheep. Lard and edible tallow are obtained by dry or wet rendering. In the wet rendering process, the fatty tissues are heated in the presence of water, generally at a low temperature. The quality of the lard or tallow from this process is better than that of products from dry rendering. Low quality lard, and almost all of the inedible tallow and greases, are produced by dry rendering. Rendered lard can be used as an edible fat without any further processing. However, because of consumer demand, lard and tallow are now often bleached and given a deodorizing treatment before being used in food. Traditionally, tallow and lard were used for deep frying. However, this use is declining in the fast food industry, due to consumer health concerns. An alternative liquid tallow product has been developed for the preparation of french fries and other fast foods, since less fat is absorbed. Tallow and lard are also used for margarine and shortening. Some edible lards are used in sausages or emulsified products. Utilization of poultry byproducts. Waste products from the poultry processing and egg production industries must be efficiently dealt with as the growth of these industries depends largely on waste management. The intensive and large-scale production of food animals and animal products has generated an enormous disposal problem for the animal industry. These wastes, including animal excreta, mortalities, hair, feathers and processing wastes are convertible to useful resources. Feather can be fermented by using feather-degrading bacterium, Bacillus lichenoformus. This bacterium ferments feather to feather lysate, A. 131. Basic agriculture digestible protein which is a good source of feed. An enzyme, keratinase, secreted by this bacterium, was purified and characterized. The keratinase is a potent proteinase that hydrolyzes collagen, elastin and feather keratin. Emulsion-based mutton nuggets, incorporating chicken byproducts, i.e., skin, gizzard and heart, SGH, from spent hens have also been evaluated. Incorporation of SGH results in better acceptability of mutton nuggets as compared to that containing mutton fat only. The main byproducts from the poultry have been presented in Table 2. Byproducts and their potential uses. Table 2. Byproducts of poultry. Type of byproduct. Percent of live weight users. Byproducts from production phase. Poultry litter and manure. Dash. Recycled feed. Surface dressing of agricultural land. Hatchery byproducts. Eggshells, and fertile eggs, unhatched eggs and dead as well as cull chicks. Hatchery byproduct meal up to 3-5% to into feed. Eggshell meal is high calcium diet. Byproducts of poultry dressing plant. Feathers. 7-8 to eight bedding material, decorative purpose, sporting equipment. Manure or fertilizer, feather meal. Heads. 2. 5-3.0. Poultry meal. Blood. 3.2 minus 3.7. Blood meal. Gizzard and proventriculus. 3. 5 minus 4.2. Edible. Source of chitinolytic enzyme. Feet. 3. 5 minus 4.0. Soup. Technical fat. Poultry grease. Intestines and glands. 8.5 minus 9.0. Spobbits. Meat meal. Poultry grease and active principles. Hormones and enzymes. Fish waste. Byproducts utilization. Fish waste is a great source of minerals, proteins and fat. Potential utilization of waste fish scraps is to produce fish protein hydrolysate by enzymic treatment. Fish protein hydrolysate could be used as a cryoprotectant to suppress the denaturation of proteins of lizard fish surimi during frozen storage. Collagen or keratin contained in. 132. Livestock and fish waste may be converted to useful products by enzymic hydrolysis, providing new physiologically functional food materials. Collagens containing yellowtail fish bone and swine skin waste were used as raw materials for production of protein hydrolysates and peptides. These hydrolysates could be of potential use as food ingredients.
Autohydrolysis of waste fish viscera to produce peptin hydrolysates and their use in bacteriocene production by lactic acid bacteria. There are several alternative uses of fish processing based, like utilization of fish mints, applications of fish gelatin. Fish is a source of nutraceutical ingredients, fish meal production, the possible use of fish and protein concentrate as a food source. Common diseases of livestock and their management. Several diseases can infect farm animals and it is impossible to accurately estimate all the losses caused by livestock diseases. However, by and large, the losses are caused by mortality, reduced productivity and lower fertility. Livestock production is an integral part of the way of life for the people of the world. Many farmers and ranchers depend upon livestock production for their livelihoods. Consumers expect adequate supplies of meat at economical prices. With livestock mass management and spread of diseases, all these are affected. Causes of diseases. Disease causes body functions to dysfunction or function improperly. Three principal reasons most often cited for the spread of diseases are poor sanitation, improper management, and introduction of new animals into a herd. One or more of the following defects cause diseases. Nutritional defects. An imbalance of required food nutrients in the ration is the cause of nutritional defects. Animals receiving inadequate amounts of vitamins, minerals, fats, carbohydrates, and protein cannot produce efficiently. Therefore, their levels of resistance to disease are lowered. Physiological defects. These defects cause an improper functioning of glands, organs, or body systems. The relationship between the diet and the proper functioning of body parts is directly related. For example, the thyroid gland regulates the rate of body metabolism and depends upon an adequate supply of iodine to function properly. An improperly functioning thyroid gland may increase the nutritive requirements of animals to the point that very few nutrients are available for growth or production. Morphological defects, physical defects, and accident or negligence is responsible for physical defects. Cuts, scrapes, scratches, bruises, and broken bones are examples of morphological defects. Any one of these can temporarily or permanently reduce the efficiency of an animal. Good management practices help eliminate defects of this nature. 133. Basic agriculture. Pathogenic defects. Certain organisms produce toxins or poisons that upset the normal metabolic activity of the animal. Viruses and bacteria are the most common disease-causing pathogens. They are microscopic in size and capable of multiplying rapidly under ideal environmental conditions. Other pathogens are fungi and protozoans. Viral diseases are the most difficult to control because viruses closely resemble the chemical compounds that make up a cell. Another problem in controlling viruses is that the chemicals capable of killing or controlling them also kill or destroy the host cell. Preventive vaccinations are the most successful method of controlling viral diseases. Bacteria are microscopic in size, produce powerful toxins, and multiply rapidly. Many bacteria are capable of forming spores, resistant forms of bacterial cells able to withstand severe environmental conditions. These spores are difficult to control and may lie dormant for years before being provided with the opportunity to cause disease. Antibiotics are used successfully to control bacteria. Fungal diseases are caused by fungi, which are small organisms. Many disease-producing fungi live in the soil. It is often difficult to determine the cause of fungal diseases, because bacteria cause a secondary infection and are often erroneously identified as fungi. Protozoa are one cell in the simplest form of animal life. Some protozoa cannot move themselves and must be transported by other means. Some move by making whip-like lashes or vibrating projections. A number of different kinds of protozoa prey upon animals and cause disease. The major diseases of the livestock and their management strategies have been described here under. Anthrax. Anthrax, a highly infectious and fatal disease of cattle, is caused by a relatively large spore-forming rectangular-shaped bacterium called Bacillus anthracis. Anthrax occurs on all the continents, causes acute mortality in ruminants. The bacteria produce extremely potent toxins which are responsible for the ill effects, causing a high mortality rate. The bacteria produce spores on contact with oxygen. Signs of the illness usually appear 3 to 7 days after the spores are swallowed or inhaled. Once signs begin in animals, they usually die within 2 days. Hoofed animals, such as deer, cattle, goats, and sheep, are the main animals affected by this disease. They usually get the disease by swallowing anthrax spores while grazing on pasture contaminated, made impure, with anthrax spores. Inhaling, breathing in, the spores, which are odorless, colorless, and tasteless, may also cause infection in animals and people. In the case of terrorism, large numbers of anthrax spores may be released into the air. Symptom sudden death, often within 2 or 3 hours of being apparently normal, is by far the most common sign. Very occasionally some animals may show trembling, a high temperature. 134. Difficulty breathing, collapse and convulsions before death. This usually occurs over a period of 24 hours. After death blood may not clot, resulting in a small amount of bloody discharge from the nose, mouth and other openings. Treatment and control due to the acute nature of the disease resulting in sudden death. Treatment is usually not possible in animals even though anthrax bacilli are clients. Treatment is of use in cases showing subacute form of the disease. In most cases, early treatment can cure anthrax. The cutaneous, skin, form of anthrax can be treated with common antibiotics such as penicillin, tetracycline, erythromycin, and ciprofloxacin, cipro. Black water, black leg, it is an acute infectious and highly fatal, bacterial disease of cattle. It is a bacterial disease caused by Clostridium chovy. Buffaloes, sheep and goats are also affected. Young cattle between 6 to 24 months of age, in good body condition are mostly affected. It is soil-borne infection which generally occurs during rainy season. In India, the disease is sporadic, 1 to 2 animal, in nature. Symptoms. Fever, 106 minus 108 degrees Fahrenheit, loss of appetite, depression and dullness. Suspended rumination. Rapid pulse and heart rates. Difficult breathing, dyspnea. Lameness in affected leg. Repetition swelling over hip, back and shoulder. Swelling is hot and painful in early stages whereas cold and painless inter. Recumbency, prostration, followed by death within 12 to 48 HRS. Treatment. Penicillin at 10,000 units per kilogram body weight 1 m and locally daily for 5 to 6 days. Oxytetracycline in high doses i.e. 5 to 10 mg per kilogram body weight 1 m or IV. Indices the swelling and drain off. BQ antiserum in large dose, if available. Injection. Able, cadistin at 5 to 10 ml IM foot and mouth disease. The foot and mouth disease is a highly communicable disease affecting cloven footed animals. It is characterized by fever, formation of vesicles and blisters in the mouth, udder, teeth and on the skin between the toes and above the hoofs. Animals recovered from the disease present a characteristically rough coat and deformation of the hoof. In India, the disease is widespread and assumes a 135. Basic agriculture position of importance in livestock industry. The disease spreads by direct contact or indirectly through infected water, manure, hay and pastures. It is also conveyed by cattle attendants. It is known to spread through recovered animals, field rats, porcupines and birds. Symptoms of foot and mouth disease. Symptoms. Fever with 104 to 105 F. Profuse salivation ropes of stringy saliva hangs from mouth. Vesicles appear in mouth and in the interdigital space. Lameness observed. Crossbred cattle are highly susceptible to it treatment. The external application of antiseptics contributes to the healing of the ulcers and boards of attacks by flies. A common and inexpensive dressing for the lesions in the feet is a mixture of coal tar and copper sulfate in the proportion of 5, 1. Precautions. Heavy milch animals and exotic breeds of cattle bred for milk should be protected regularly. 
It is advisable to carry out two vaccinations at an interval of six months followed by an annual vaccination program. Isolation and segregation of sick animals. It should be informed immediately to the veterinary doctor. 136. Disinfection of animal sheds with bleaching powder or phenol. Attendance and equipments for sick animals should be ideally separate. The equipments should be thoroughly sanitized. Proper disposal of leftover feed by the animal. Proper disposal of carcasses. Control of flies rinder pest. Rinderpest is the most destructive of the virus diseases of cloven footed animals, such as cattle, buffaloes, sheep, goats, pigs, and wild ruminants. Its control was a major issue till recently all over the world. Organized efforts over half a century have brought about a total eradication of the disease in the Western Hemisphere. The disease still persists in the Asian countries. The virus is found notable in the saliva, discharged from eyes and nostrils, and in the urine and feces. It is present in the circulating blood during the febrile stage and is later concentrated in different organs, especially in the spleen, lymph nodes, and liver. Outside the animal body, the virus is rapidly destroyed by direct sunlight and disinfectants. Cold preserves the virus. The virus is usually spread by contaminated feed and water. Rise in temperature up to 104, 107 OF. Lacrimation and redness of eye. Foul odor from mouth. Discrete necrotic foci develop in the buccal mucosa, inside lip, and on the tongue. Bloody mucoid diarrhea is noticed. Treatment. Symptomatic treatment with penicillin. Streptomycin, sulfidimidine and intestinal antiseptics has no action on the virus, but may help in the recovery of less severe cases of rinderpest, as these control secondary. Complications caused by bacteria. Mastitis, mastitis, or inflammation of the mammary gland, is the most common and the most expensive disease of dairy cattle throughout most of the world. Although stress and physical injuries may cause inflammation of the gland, infection by invading bacteria or auto microorganisms, fungi, yeasts and possibly viruses, is the primary cause of mastitis. Infections begin when microorganisms penetrate the teeth canal and multiply in the mammary gland. Treatment. Success depends on the nature of the etiological agent involved, the severity of the disease and the extent of fibrosis. Symptoms of mastitis in cow. 137. Basic agriculture. Complete recovery with freedom from bacterial infection can be obtained in cases of recent infection and in those where fibrosis has taken place only to a small extent. Such drugs as acroflavin, gramicidin and tyrotricin have now ceased to be in use, and have given place to the more effective drugs, such as sulfonamides, penicillin and streptomycin. Foot rot. Foot rot is a common cause of lameness in cattle and occurs most frequently when cattle on pasture are forced to walk through mud to obtain water and feed. However, it may occur among cattle in paddocks as well, under apparently excellent conditions. Foot rot is caused when a cut or scratch in the skin allows infection to penetrate between the claws or around the top of the hoof. Individual cases should be kept in a dry place and treated promptly with medication as directed by a veterinarian. If the disease becomes a herd problem, a foot bath containing a 5% solution of copper sulfate placed where cattle are forced to walk though it once or twice a day will help to reduce the number of new infections. In addition, drain mud holes and cement areas around the water troughs where cattle are likely to pick up the infection. Keep pens and areas where cattle gather as clean as possible. Proper nutrition regarding protein, minerals and vitamins will maximize hoof health. Ringworm. This is the most common infectious skin disease affecting beef cattle. It is caused by a fungus, and is transmissible to man. Typically the disease appears as crusty gray patches usually in the region of the head and neck and particularly around the eyes. As a first step in controlling the disease, it is recommended that, whenever possible, affected animals should be segregated and their pens or stalls cleaned and disinfected. Clean cattle which have been in contact with the disease should be watched closely for the appearance of lesions and treated promptly. Proper nutrition, particularly high levels of vitamin A, copper and zinc while not a cure, will help to raise the resistance of the animal and in so doing offer some measure of control. Contact your vet and or feed store for products to treat this disease. Using a berma like Evomec will kill lice and help prevent cattle from scratching causing skin damage and a place for the fungus to enter. Milk fever. Milk fever, also known as perturrent hypocalcemia and perturrent paresis, is a disease which has assumed considerable importance with the development of heavy milking cows. Decrease in the levels of ionized calcium in tissue fluids is basically the cause of the disease. In all adult cows there is a fall in serum calcium levels with the onset of lactation at calving. 138. The disease usually occurs in 5 to 10 year old cows and is chiefly caused by a sudden decrease in blood calcium level, generally within 48 hours after calving. Symptoms. In classical cases, hypocalcemia is the cause of clinical symptoms. Hypophosphatemia and variations in the concentration of serum magnesium may play some subsidiary role. The clinical symptoms develop usually in 1 to 3 days after calving. They are characterized by loss of appetite, constipation and restlessness, but there is no rise in temperature. Nutritional defects in animals. Anemia. All farm animals are susceptible. Iron deficiency prevents the formation of hemoglobin, a red iron containing pigment in the red blood cells responsible for carrying oxygen to the cells. Characterized by general weakness and a lack of vigor. A balanced ration usually prevents the occurrence of anemia. Load typically occurs when animals are grazing on highly productive pastures during the better part of late spring and summer. Swollen abdomen on the left side, labored breathing, profuse salivation, groaning, lack of appetite, and stiffness. Maintain pastures composed of 50% or more grass. Anterotoxemia. It is caused by bacteria and overweighting. Constipation is an early symptom and sometimes followed by diarrhea. Bacterin or antitoxin vaccine should be used at the beginning of the feeding period. Founder or weighting of grain, or lush, highly improved pasture grasses. Affected animals experience pain and may have fever as high as 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Good management and feeding practices prevent the disease. Common poultry diseases and their management. Foul coccidiosis. This disease is caused by a protozoan parasite of the intestine and can cause very heavy losses in poultry particularly up to the age of 12 weeks. Symptoms. The chicks lose weight and their appetites. Their feathers become ruffled and soiled. Combs are pale and they tend to huddle together in corners. Droppings are watery and greenish or brown in color often containing blood. Control measures. Use of bifurin in feed at all times. Keep the litter dry and loose and keep chicks isolated in freshly sterilized pens. Use bifurin in the water according to the manufacturer's instructions. Isolate sick birds. 139. Basic agriculture. When the attack dies down, disinfect litter and sterilize pens. Ranicate, a highly infectious and fatal viral disease, it attacks poultry of all ages. Also known as Newcastle disease. Symptoms. Inactivity, droopiness and sleepiness. Pale combs and bottles which later turn blue. Full and distended crop. Gasping for air, wheezing and coughing. Clean diarrhea with foul odor. The head may be twisted to the side, drawn back or down between the legs. Convulsions, paralysis and incoordination. Control measures. Vaccinate chicks of one day with F1 vaccine. Revaccinate again at six to eight weeks with Ranicate vaccine. Foul pox, a viral disease that can affect birds at any age, resulting in high mortality rates. Symptoms. Formation of gray spots or blisters on bottles which after several days enlarge and develop into what-like eruptions with scales. Removal of scales results in rough, raw bleeding wounds. Formation of hard crust in 10 to 14 days. Control measures. Do not overcrowd birds. Vaccinate with pigeon pox vaccine at 7 days of age. Follow this by a further foul pox vaccine at 6 weeks of age. Foul coraza, a bacterial disease contaminated through feed, water and by contact through carriers. 
Symptoms. Watery discharge from eyes and nose and sometimes sticking of eyelids. Noticeable difficulty in breathing, shaking of head and wheezing. Odorous, cheesy droppings. Soil feathers under the wings with foul odor. Control measures. Observe strict sanitary condition and make certain that an adequate source of vitamin A is provided in the diet. 140. Infected birds should be culled and destroyed in the house. Feeders and water are thoroughly disinfected. An injection of antibiotics is also helpful. Foul cholera, a bacterial disease contaminated mostly through feed and water. Symptoms. Sudden death without any visible symptoms. Diarrhea and fever. Swelling of the waters followed by wrinkles. Painful abscesses in the joint of legs and lameness. Control measures. Affected birds should be segregated. Treated with 0.2% sod. Sulfamethine in drinking water or by injecting broad spectrum antibiotic like terimycin, 40 mg per kilogram by WT. Control is achieved by timely vaccination. Marek's disease. The disease is caused by a virus which is spread from an infected chicken to a non-infected one through the air, poultry dust, by contact, sometimes feces. Greatest susceptibility from 6 to 26 weeks of age. Symptoms. Paralysis of legs and or wings. Labored breathing. Whistling and circling movements. Unilateral and bilateral blindness. On postmortem examination, whitish nodules in muscles of thigh, neck, kidneys, testes, and in ovaries are seen. Control measures. Immunization of birds by using vaccines. Procure genetically resistant chicks. Super sanitation. Vaccination in farm animals and poultry. Farm animals and poultry birds are vulnerable to several potent diseases. Every year we find several reports of sheep and goat pox, SGP, in sheep and goat, foot and mouth disease, FMD, in cloven footed animals, particularly cattle, runicate disease, RKD, and infectious bursal disease, IBD, in poultry and other disease outbreaks in different species of livestock on account of faulty vaccination or non-vaccination leading to huge financial losses to the livestock rearers. Thus before establishing a commercial livestock unit an entrepreneur or a farmer need to know all about vaccination and immunization. 141. Basic agriculture to save livestock from disease outbreaks and have a profitable income generating unit. Vaccines A vaccine is a biological preparation that improves immunity to a particular disease. A vaccine typically contains an agent that resembles a disease-causing microorganism and is often made from weakened or killed forms of the microbe, its toxins are one of its surface proteins. The agent stimulates the body's immune system to recognize the agent is foreign, destroy it, and keep a record of it, so that the immune system can more easily recognize and destroy any of these microorganisms that it later encounters. Vaccines may be prophylactic for example to prevent or ameliorate the effects of a future infection by any natural or wild, pathogen or therapeutic e.g. vaccines against cancer are also being investigated. Vaccination Vaccination, immunization, is a tried and tested method of assisting in the continual fight against disease in man and animals. Vaccination protects hundreds of millions of animals worldwide from disease and possibly death. Animals, just like humans, suffer from a range of infectious diseases. As veterinary medicine has advanced, prevention of disease has become a priority as healthy food comes from healthy animals. One of the best means of preventing disease is by creating immunity in the animal. This is usually achieved by vaccination. Animals which develop disease often require treatment with medicines so vaccination helps reduce the amount of pharmaceuticals used in the treatment of animals. Vaccination presents no hazard to consumers of produce from vaccinated animals. Major objectives of vaccination. There are three basic objectives in vaccination. To provide immunity to the animal or group of animals, active immunity. To provide immunity to the offspring of an animal via vaccination of the dam, passive immunity. Vaccination is being done in buffalo. 142. Or to provide immunity to the animal or group of animals and their offspring, active and passive immunity. The do's and don'ts in vaccination A. Storage of vaccine. Ensure all vaccines are stored correctly before use. Many vaccines require cool storage, ideally have a dedicated refrigerator for vaccines and medicines that can be secured. Any vaccine not requiring refrigeration should be stored in a dedicated vaccine store or otherwise the medicines cabinet or store. These must be lockable. Keep all vaccines away from children. Keep all medicine cabinets, stores and refrigerators clean. Where similar vaccines are kept with different expiry dates ensure those with the shortest expiry time are at the front. Many vaccines only have a short shelf life, ensure you only use vaccines in date. When ordering vaccines ensure only sufficient is ordered to meet the requirements at that time. B. Animals to be vaccinated. Only vaccinate fit and healthy animals. Do not vaccinate stressed animals. Do not vaccinate exhausted animals. Do not vaccinate animals in very late pregnancy. Do not vaccinate animals younger than the age given by the vaccine manufacturers without taking advice. Elderly animals may not respond in their immunity as well as younger ones. Do not vaccinate animals that are nutritionally deprived or starved. Do not vaccinate animals that are deficient in nutrients including vitamins and minerals. Do not vaccinate animals soon after they have been ill without taking advice from the manufacturers. Do not vaccinate animals too close to service or in the service period unless it is stated that this is acceptable. Do not vaccinate animals that are immune suppressed. When injecting vaccines ensure that the site of injection is clean and dry. If animals have had an immunosuppressive disease or illness wait as long as possible before vaccination. Where possible take advice from the manufacturers. 143. Basic agriculture. Do not use more than one vaccine at the same time unless authorized. If different vaccines for different diseases need to be given to the same animal, there must be an adequate interval in between each vaccine to ensure that they all produce a satisfactory immune response. Do not administer other treatments or do other procedures at the same time as vaccination without taking advice from the manufacturer. If other procedures or treatments are of necessity to be given for management purposes as well as vaccination, undertake a risk assessment of the likely effects on efficacy. Ensure when feed or water is the vehicle for providing vaccination then it has been correctly prepared so that the vaccine is not negatively affected by the vehicle. Manufacturers provide instructions as how to prepare feed and water appropriately. If vaccines are to be given orally via water or feed, manage the animals to ensure all will be able to receive their appropriate amount of the treated feed or water. Access